On this day, 10 years ago, I made a very big decision without knowing it. I downloaded War Thunder for the first time on the 23rd of March 2013. And that changed my life forever. Hello, hello there and welcome back to my channel and today it's actually 10 years ago since I made that fateful decision and at that time I had no idea what I was going into. I had no idea how much I would learn, how much I would change and that I actually would go this path for 10 years and maybe some more years to come, who knows. And I think it's just really good to just sit down and recap some of the steps that I made ever since. And um, also this might be the last video in the current location because IRL things happened. So it's a good time to reflect what happened. So yeah, I remember watching a video from Jingles, multiple videos where he was playing you know, War Thunder. And it looked just so simple, nice and fun to fly with a Catalina flying boat and just bomb the enemy airfield. And it was in arcade. And I wanted to do this myself. And I did very often and not just with a Catalina. Now, it was just so immersing. It was just so catchy, this game. And there was just so much potential. But there were also problems, as you would expect with such a massive project. And, you know, I think that I learned so many lessons for also IRL that I think it's worth sharing. And um, before you get bored by it, also I need to talk about some serious things like, for example, yeah, gaming edition and what you should not do and what you should do. So... I think that I just go over some raw numbers just to, just to put things into perspective. In arcade alone, I played over 27,000 battles. In realistic battles, 52,000 battles and some 234 battles in sim. Overall, that is 79,813 battles overall in 10 years. I also have now on my account 300 million silver lines just lying around just like that and i earned overall in my in my career some 1.2 billion silver lines i also have currently on my account 2199 vehicles that i own some more are unlocked but not purchased and I have 1,806 of those 2,199 vehicles spaded with a big portion of the remaining ones just missing one or two modules due to new implementations. And the story doesn't end there. Since late 2014, I am in the same clan, TRFNX, which stands for Trefnix or Hit Nothing as a little bit of a slang. And also... It's now nearly seven years ago that finally I started my own YouTube channel. Well, going active with it in terms of uploading video with the first video being the T44100 test video number one. That was uploaded on the 22nd of April 2016. And I was finally brought to making my own videos after harassing people like Mike Goes Boom on the Gentleman's Hangar. Uh, that was back in the day still Discord 3. No, no, TeamSpeak 3, I'm sorry. And um, it all started with Squire requesting help on Facebook um, a few years prior to this. And I still remember that video that we made. And ever since, on the Gentleman's Hangar, I made contact to many people to which I still have contact to. Namely, Squireflyer, Digital Digging, Max, Mike Goes Boom, The Orange Doom, Many Miles Away, and many more. And also, I made contact with people that uh, ever since I also got friends with IRL. And it's also this point where I absolutely have to thank all of you. I have to thank the people that were with me 
since the very first days of making YouTube content for War Thunder. People that have supported me in making videos that gave me tips and tricks. People that made constructive criticism in my videos. The people that made my Discord server and ever since keep it in line. And there are just so many people that I got to know. And you know, that's the positive aspect that you get to know people all around the world. And then you talk to them over TeamSpeak, Discord or whatever. And you just, you know, you get to know them from a different perspective. That people all around the world are just the same as you, essentially. And that is just also a very important life lesson. Now... I also made contact with people that otherwise I would have have not been able to be um, in contact with. For example, Brachinifel. You know this guy from me including 5-minute guides in my ship reviews. I also made videos with him. The most famous one that exceeds now 2 million or even 3 million views about the first and last voyage of the Bismarck. And... Yeah, it's just an amazing journey that I went through. But also there are the dark sides of all of this. I mentioned it previously. There is something like gaming addiction and that has also been a part of my life. However, I somehow turn it around in the right direction. But I know how extremely difficult it is how just your entire life spirals then about, the, uh, about this one game that you can't get away from. And for anybody that doesn't experience this, that has not seen anybody suffering from this, you just cannot really imagine. And it's therefore that I want to talk about this because I'm sure that some of you might also be in danger of gaming addiction and it's actually a serious thing. So when I started War Thunder, IRL became less and less important and I nearly threw university. Now a few years back I actually got my Master of Science as a chemical engineer despite War Thunder and that is just what I always wanted to be, what I worked so hard. But without War Thunder I would have gotten it much sooner, much easier and the rest of my uh, real life experience would also have been much better. So I think that this is something that you really should be honest about. If you get up in the morning, you look into the mirror and you have to ask yourself, I, am I gaming addicted? Can I be without War Thunder for an extended period of time? I'm not talking about when you just, you know, had a few bad days and you need to get away from something that is completely, that is something completely different than getting into it and not being able to get away from War Thunder itself. I'm not talking here about uh, the events. I'm not talking about that there is a new update and it's including one, ve one vehicle or a couple of vehicles that you were absolutely um, looking forward for a long time. That is not gaming addiction. That is maybe a short-term mild version of it. I'm talking about months and years and also there is the gambling addiction and you know with the introduction of loot boxes the marketplace and so forth there is so much more that people spend on when they try to get rare vehicles rare skins and whatnot you just kind of have a look at the gadget marketplace yourself and look at the insane prices for vehicles that are just, you know, in some other tech trees freely available. Uh, one good example is here in the Chinese tank tech tree, um, if I can find it quite now. Um, it's that one LVT A4 Cis2. It's also a really rare vehicle in the American tech tree. And, you know, it's battle rating 1.3, rank 1. Um, it has no real value. No, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, you know, it's it's really low tier. It's not really worth all that much. You shouldn't just throw an insane amount of money at it. Uh, and I'm not talking about the price of a premium pack. I'm talking about hundreds of dollars. Now that is a big problem. And if you now feel like 
being addressed, you should actually seek help. And this is like the duality with War Thunder. On the one hand, it's probably the greatest game I have ever played myself so far. And it's an enormous project with literally thousands of vehicles, uh, various different game modes, variations, events, and the various game mechanics that are so addictive but at the same time we get so frustrated when things are just buggy uh, when we uh, experience again that the server hamsters are dying when gaijin makes let's call it unfortunate balancing decisions and there are literally hundreds of examples throughout the 10 years and I think that this game has so much potential and so much could have been done better so that we would have a much bigger player base and nobody can tell me that Gaijin lacks money at this point. What I think they lack is the passion for the individual battle. They obviously have a different job, the devs I'm talking about, but some decisions are clearly evidence for them not playing the game anymore or never have for them it's primarily a job and sometimes you really feel this and it's outright frustrating on the other hand maybe you shouldn't have that high of expectations sure it's good looking especially in 4k with the highest possible settings etc it's just a beautiful game but in the core principle it's just pixels in different colors and this is a lesson that is so easy to forget when you look at the planes um, with good flight models that is feeling so good what drew me in in 2014 um, the much more realistic approach even in arcade for tanks compared to other uh, competitors that i never really liked and the same could be said for ships so this game has such a huge variety that even multiple other games combined couldn't simulate uh, War Thunder properly or even a noticeable fraction. While War Thunder is still part of my daily life, I think it lost its place number one in my life five years ago when I actually went out and, you know, uh, went to a party where I then met my girlfriend and we are together for five years plus with hopefully many more years to um, experience together to enjoy IRL and let me know this when you start War Thunder it's the greatest thing ever when you start YouTube and you see your channel growing you see for the first time even some money coming in for just sitting in your chair and playing computer games a little bit of uh, video editing etc and it it feels like the promised land you feel like you could do this forever until then you realize that you are so dependent on youtube so dependent on your subscribers, viewers, whatever, and also on War Thunder with Gaijin attached to it. So the best decision in my life was to not make it my main job. Regardless how my channel does, that's not the point. Because while you can have holidays, IRL, you cannot really have the same amount of holidays as a YouTuber if you take it personal. And that's before you go into the expenses for the latest hardware, the latest software. And if anything is wrong with that, you're really screwed. I follow many YouTubers and streamers as a silent observer, and I can absolutely understand the frustration and the bitterness when something that should work doesn't work because your entire life depends on it. As a source of income, you are rel you rely on so many factors, YouTube, Gaijin, your subscribers, and also the hardware and software. And if only one of those factors falls apart, well, you're absolutely screwed. So 10 years of War Thunder have taught me so many valuable lessons, both in good and bad. And one final thing that I want to address here is the following. And that also has to do with my degree, with my academical degree. And that has how you do research, 
how you just look into things. It's easy to look at three, four things, three, four sources, and then just come to a conclusion. And you might not be wrong about the conclusion, but you always have to think about that that knowledge that you acquired, that the conclusion that you made is stemming only from the few sources that you have. And it's always something that you should really take seriously that there might be, you know, some details that you're missing out that are fundamental for understanding how things are the way they are or how decisions were made in the past. And decisions that would be stupid from our perspective absolutely made sense in the past. When you think about mm, battles and economics of World War I, the interwar period and World War II, post-World War II into the modern era. And that is also something that you can use for seeing things in the current age and day. And I think this is something that I can clearly say after 10 years. My God, was I stupid 10 years ago. And my God, I'm quite sure my myself in 10 years will think equally disastrously about my current now but i think that the most important steps of learning are made and one further thing that has to do with war thunder i had no idea that there is such a huge variety in you know various different fighting vehicles or vessels that there are so many different versions and weapon systems and especially about the World War II period. Yeah, everybody knows a Tiger, a Panther, a T-34 and a Sherman, but that there were also quite the various different versions and some prototype stages, how they were started in terms of development, what was the reason for it, how it actually turned out in battle and put it in perspective. That just teaches you a lot. However, one thing should be clear. It's just the perfect environment for the vehicle based point of view. And we do not have like actual combined arms on a huge front lines. It's just, what is it? 16 versus 16, something like that. And that is just a point where you could be deceived that then, okay, this vehicle does better in war thunder uh, so it must be much better than it was reported uh, you know under real life conditions vice versa etc so many aspects are not shown in the game and please never forget this and one final thing is that we are in the golden age at least here in western europe that we are living in peace for a very long time and that we can just play war without actually suffering something personal unless you have some gaming addiction that just eats away your time, your patience and your mental health. And I want to reach out to some of my fellow YouTubers and streamers. Don't stress out and reflect your current status what will be your future? I've talked in private with a lot of streamers and YouTubers already, and they had similar experiences in certain aspects, different in others. Some do it significantly more professional than I ever did and will do, but others, they are just, um, they are just the golden boys of the algorithm of YouTube or on also Twitch and also just hit the request for the community just better than I do. What I want to say is with this, after 10 years, this has been a journey that in one way I wouldn't miss. I could definitely say that things should have been done better. My life probably would have gotten more straight line, if you will, if I would have not made that fateful decision of making a War Thunder account and downloading the game that day. On the other hand, the person that I'm right now, I am 
only because this is a big portion of my experience in life. And some of you are looking at, for example, the numbers that I just went through, you know, nearly 80,000 battles, 300 million civil lines on the bank and having multiple thousands of vehicles throughout the various different tech trees from ships to boat, helicopters, planes and tanks, you name it, in basically all nations. But this has come at a serious price that you cannot pay in purely money. And so I think that this is a good moment to reflect that and I hope that you're still with me. So I'm very, very interested in what you have to say about what I just said. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know if you have completely different experiences, if you're a new player or if you're also a veteran. I'm really interested what my audience is made up of in terms of status, how long you're with the game, um, what are you proud of, what were your mistakes, have you had already experience with gaming addiction or gambling addiction and I am really looking forward to have a really great discussion with you guys in the comment section. And as usual, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You know how to subscribe. You know where the like button is. And we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.